Welcome back. Now, at least five people have died of a heat stroke in the Northern Cape. This follows a heat wave that hit the province this week. Farm workers bore the brunt of the sweltering temperatures exacerbated by the ongoing blackouts. How are the workers getting help? Well, let's find out from the Northern Cape MEC for Agriculture, Marse Manopole, uh, Manopole rather, who joins us now uh, virtually. Thank you very much, MEC, for your time here on ENC. I believe that uh, uh, authorities or rather uh, provincial leaders were supposed to go to this particular farm or farms to yeah. investigate what happened. Did, yeah. Has this happened yet? Yes, um, good afternoon, uh, Masoho and the, the viewers. Yes, it did happen the, the past two days, let me say, um, Saturday and Sunday. The team were here on the ground uh, to get us some information. But now what we can say, this morning, myself and the Minister of um, the Labour, the Tulas Nelson, mm. we got a brilliant um, report uh, from, from the team of both department, or department of um, Agriculture, Environmental Affairs, Rural Development, Land Reform, and Labour. So those are the preliminary reports that you received this morning. Mm, have you taken a look at the preliminary report? What does it show? Uh, for now, we, we cannot um, uh, give um, publicize the report because in, in conclusive report, we might uh, uh, because of the new information might come in. So the, the likelihood that my the influence uh, towards the conclusive report. So you don't want to be irresponsible to give out the, the print report. That prelim report was asked to give us a better chance to be able to see when we engage the farmers, uh, the, the employers, what can we engage upon and request them and to check what further me measures can be put in place to, to just to be able to, to avoid uh, um, such situation. But what I can say, and also to report to you, this morning we received uh, from five, we, um, we can I report that we, it's about eight now that has uh, passed on. Uh, yesterday, last and the other one after we got the information, the, the, the police this morning also gave us a report. And, but now we, we, it's not conclusive. Um, the, the, the heat wave for now we can say is the um, suspected um, one of the costs. So we will wait for the for the report to give us a conclusive in, in, in information what the real cost. But the heat did contribute for them not feeling uh, they um, fell ill, then eventually succumb to whatever medical condition that made them to succumb to them. Mm. So basically, you're confirming to me, MEC, that uh, there's eight people who have died possibly from a heat stroke, right? Are these all still yes. farm workers? Because yesterday the update from your department was that uh, two or three were still in hospital on ventilators. Are these all still farm workers? And is this from one particular farm? No, it's all of them are, are farm workers. The one who was on yesterday is a, is a driver of the tractor. Mm. Uh, who, who passed on uh, yesterday? Uh, all there are about five farmers and uh, farm farm um, that are affected. Not all of them are in the same area, but in the same farm. But they are in the same area of Kakamas uh, area. All all these five farms that are here. And I, I must indicate to you that um, this is the harvesting season for the grapes, uh, the table and the raisin grapes. So as a result, uh, there's lots of uh, seasonal workers that are present here to harvest uh, the, those, those grapes. So they are subjected to being outside uh, doing this labor uh, to ensure that we understand um, to, to our farmers, they are chasing to ensure that the quality of their product is being preserved. Hence, they have ensured that um, they push the production uh, to, to harvest the the, 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 the the scripts from when on their orchard. But we have engaged them this morning. We have assured even the minister, because the, the inspector general, the minister came with the inspector general, who, who is responsible for the inspectors throughout the country, the enforcement, to ensure that they adhere to health and safety uh, regulations of the Department uh, of Labor that are there. So those are the things that the minister has engaged with them, and they have assured them they will look into uh, the operational times they will adjust uh, um, and to ensure that maybe perhaps they must start by five o'clock in the morning and uh, up until 11 and take a break in between 
And later in the afternoon, that the weather has cooled down, the heat has cooled down, then they can resume uh, their production work. So those are the things that uh, uh, myself and the minister have been, uh, Minister of Labor, to last night, said to have been engaging the farmers. Now, as I'm sitting to, we are on the second farm that we have visited. We 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 done with the first farmer, um, but that is there. Now we are second farmer. We are sitting there engaging them. They are not hostile. They understand. They are also saying that they are also. Uh, traumatized by what they've been subjected uh, to by losing one of their of their of the workers. Mm -hmm. And uh, MEC, you know, looking at, I know that you said you can't share the contents of the preliminary report, but would anything uh, possibly lead to criminal charges, or you're going to wait, for instance, for the toxicology? Uh, uh, report, uh, not toxicology, excuse me, uh, for forensics to be done uh, with their reports to find out exactly what the cause was, but are you ruling out the possibility of criminal charges? Um, um, that area of expertise, the area of Minister of Labour, but when we were mm. in the meeting, he did highlight uh, uh, to, to the farmers, uh, even to ourselves, saying that there's a process that they, they normally follow when even um, the, as the Department of Labor, where they says there are um, certain clauses that they go in be able to ensure that they are implemented. So that if this prelim report um, uh, in, uh, have to give us an indication that there's a need for, uh, for them to go and do further invis investigation according to their regulations, to the certain clause in their regulations, they will be able to give us, if then they and the, 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 the report will be able to give us the recommendation. If there's a need, the report says that there comes with the recommendation that there's certain law enforcement have to come in, it will have to be done. So these are the words of the, the minister in our meeting that we able to so mm. I don't want to put um, speak in on behalf of the Department of Labor. They will be able to give the briefing. Uh, I think the minister's visit uh, when he's done, will be able to give us the, the comprehensive um, briefing to the media what are these findings and what will be moving forward will be there. But mm. uh, we will be working closely uh, with the minister. He said, assured that his team will be on the ground and working with us as a department of agriculture in the province and be able to do further investigation if there's a need for further investigation for, for us. Mm. And the families of the deceased, MEC, have you been able to get in contact with any of them? One of them is here with us here. We, after this meeting with the farmers, we are going to engage them and be able to see. Then we are informed that the one of the um, deceased of the first farm that we went to, uh, she she was buried yesterday, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and and today, at least one of the uh, farmers, uh, the farm worker, is the, the family members are here. We're going to meet them. And there's the arrangement that we need. And then the other issue that I want to also communicate, um, out of majority of the farm uh, workers who were, were passed on are from us uh, outside the province. So mm -hmm. we'll have to be able to see how we can we visit and be able to see if we can dispatch some of our team members to be able to engage or even engage our counterpart in our different provinces. In, for example, in this nature department of, I mean, Northwest, in, uh, by the part in the uh, Northwest yeah. province, if I can speak to the MEC to be able to, to visit that family that site. Well, because I'm also engaging here in the mm. province, there's still some work needs to continue this week. I will not be able to, to I cannot commit, I'll be able to visit to all of them because yeah. I'm in the northwest. Mm. And just lastly and very quickly, uh, MEC, you know, some of the farm workers have spoken uh, to other media houses and they've been quoted as saying that they believe, or farmers even, that they believe that load shedding also contributed to this because uh, the Northern Cape is a warm province. It is a province that uh, usually goes through heat waves. And I'm not sure if this is the first time that so many people are passing away in one week uh, of, um, you know, uh, heat strokes because of the heat wave there. Uh, are farmers telling you that, uh, you know, Know, because of load shedding, it exacerbated the issue because it means the equipment is not working? Let me first say that um, the farmers that have been, we've met already, they are saying to us, is they, we, we, as a Northern Cape province, we normally get the, the, the wheat heat wave. Yeah. But also we get the indication from the, the, the weather forecast. This year. They told us the heat wave of this is worse than the other years. So themselves, that is for the first time they experience such a heat wave as well such fatalities in their farms. So it's, it has never happened in, in, in their farms. So this is the 
the, the shock to, to, to them is all of us in the province, and I think I want to believe in the country. Let me go to what you, the other issue that you have raised. Uh, like I said, we are in a season of harvesting. Understand the issue of, of load shedding. So to me, the issue of harvesting is the is a manual labor mm. where the farmers, the farm workers have to do the man, manual labor. I'm not downplaying the issue or the impact of, of load shedding or the energy crisis in, in the agricultural sector. This is what I, I wanted to say that. But the one of this nature, I don't, I don't have a link. I don't understand the link. Maybe the report will tell us when it was been, it's, it's been compiled, be compiled and given to us. But the issue of the energy crisis that uh, I want to also to speak to it, which the minister has also last week issued a, a, space, a, a press statement, Minister Tokodidiza, around the issue of the energy crisis, what she's going to do. Last week, we had a, minister, a special minister speaking only on the issue of the energy crisis and the impact on the agriculture. So the minister has set up the task team uh, in place. Uh, tomorrow, I will be engaging the, the farmers, farmers Union and Farmers Association just to relate the process that the minister took to this and ourselves as the leaders of the sector in the government, what to uh, want to unfold. The framework yeah. moving forward is going, is going to happen. So the ESCOM was then making us presentation. So we're going to outline what the process we're going to do in place mm. and the strategy that we want to develop with the task team that expect will be present be able to give us that information yeah. as well. Yeah, especially for a province like yours that actually has, uh, you know, a lot of people who rely on the farms and working at the farms to be able to survive. Thank you very much for your time, MEC, here on ENCA. That was uh, Marse Manopole. She's the Northern Cape Agriculture MEC. So uh, there are two, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, there are parallel investigations going on. The investigation on what caused the deaths of the eight people now that she's confirmed eight people who died, but also uh, Labor Department investigations on whether or not farmers were actually following processes when it came uh, to being able to give their workers the tools to be able to execute their duties.